Hi friends, uh, Pastor Randy here. Um, I've got some thoughts from God's Word uh, this evening that I want to share that will perhaps help you rest well tonight with God's Word uh, planted in your heart. So my thoughts are uh, like, like my, most of my devotions. It's just something I've been, been really thinking about all day. Um, it began with an email that I sent this morning. You probably received it. If you didn't, you're not on, e on uh, River Church e uh, email uh, list. And so shoot me an email, randy at riverchurchrgv.com, and I'll make sure that uh, we get you on that list. But in the email, I was talking about uh, my desire to see us as a church become more closely knit as a community of faith and love and, and hope and and uh, so talking about community and talking about loving our, the, our neighbors, which of course Jesus calls us to, and we often say, Jesus said to love your neighbors yourself. That is, that is a true statement, absolutely. Um, so, so I was talking about who, who's your neighbor, and, and I think the context of, of our conversation with that email that I sent was that your neighbor is your fellow church members and friends there in your community of faith at River Church. Um, or if you go to a different church, you know, your, your, your neighbors would be the people that you go to church with there. That's one uh, application of the, of, the, of the term neighbor. So Jesus says, love your neighbor as yourself. So after that email was sent, I, I had a discussion with a dear friend, and I, I said that I'm compelled to believe that a Christian ethic, a Christian teaching, a teaching of Jesus, is that we are to go beyond loving our neighbors as much as we love ourselves. I believe that, that a Christian ethic that a teaching of Jesus is that we are called to love our neighbors uh, more than we love ourselves. Um, and that's, that's a hard concept to really swallow, I realize. And, and so I've been, I've been contemplating, why do I feel that way? What's the basis for that? Because if, if, if I go to Scripture, does that square with the Scripture? And so I've, I've been thinking about that all day, and I, I just want to tell you why I believe that. Um, Philippians 2, chapter 5, it says that we should have the attitude that our, our master, our teacher, our leader, our Lord has, that we should take on his attitude, and that of, of course, Jesus Christ. If you're a Christian, then he's the boss man. He's our leader, and we follow his ways. We take our cues from Jesus. And so, so Philippians 2, 5 says, have the attitude that Jesus had. You take on that same attitude, and it goes on and it says this. Um, have this mind or attitude among yourselves, which is in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but he emptied himself, took on the form of a servant, um, being born in the likeness of man, um, and uh, he was obedient to the point of death, obedient to, to the Father, even to the point of death. And so... Um, what is going on here? Um, this passage is saying, you be like your leader. You take your cues from your leader, and what did your leader do? Though he was and is and always will be God, he didn't consider his, his deity something that he had to like hold on to in the sense that he had to, to fight with, with pride and, and arrogance. No, he humbled himself. Uh, Continue to be God. He didn't have to give up any of his dignity, value, worth. He didn't give up any of his dignity, value, and worth. But he, but he humbled himself to the point of death, uh, to the point of obedience to 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 God the Father. And, and so, and so, what the writer, or what Paul is saying, is that we should take on that attitude. So, what does that look like? That looks like, like that. I say, I can humble myself. In other words, I can even come under somebody. I can, I can put myself below someone else, make them more important than me, love them more than I love myself in certain situations without giving up any of my dignity, value, and worth. That's what Jesus did. He didn't give up any of his deity. He maintained his dignity, value, worth, but he, he humbled himself. He came under uh, soldiers and religious leaders and, and the masses of people, he let them do to him what they chose to do to him. Didn't have to, but he humbled himself. He loved them more than he loved himself. 
He didn't consider his name and fame and reputation something to be grasped, but he humbled himself. More importantly, he humbled himself, came under the will of God the Father. And so Paul, who writes the Philippians, says, be like that. Have that attitude. Be, be, be humble and be willing to, at times, love others, make others more important. Than, than yourself. Okay, so that's one aspect of why I would say that I believe that, that Jesus actually calls us to love our neighbors more than we love ourselves. A second would be the, the, the actual teaching of Jesus regarding the neighbor that, that religious people say, hey, uh, who's my neighbor? And Jesus tells the, the story of the good Samaritan. Now you have to understand that the Samaritan had been systematically uh, hated and mistreated by the Jews. And there was no, no, no legitimate reason why the Good Samaritan should come along and find this bloody Jewish man who'd been beaten by robbers, find this bloody Jewish man on the side of the road and, and help him. That's the story of the Good Samaritan. He's traveling and he finds a bloody, beaten up Jewish man. Nobody else was helping him. The Jewish people weren't helping him. The Jewish people were just walking right by. But the Samaritan man, who's not Jewish, he's systematically hated by the Jews. He's considered, he's called a dog by the Jews. He sees a Jewish man, uh, he doesn't have to help him. Um, he doesn't, in the worldly sense, owe him a thing. But Jesus says part of being a neighbor is he, the Samaritan, stooped down kind of made himself nothing, helped his oppressor, helped the one that hated him. And that is the example that Jesus gives of someone loving his or her neighbor. Now, if you want to talk about the example of somebody um, loving someone else more than he loves himself, putting his own reputation or his own pride and his own honor, kind of putting it aside for a moment and saying, I'm going to serve you even though you attempt to rob me of my dignity and value and worth. You're a racist and you, you, you have systematically oppressed me. I'm going to love you anyway. Um, that, is, that is making someone else more important than yourself. That is loving someone else at that moment in time more than you love yourself. And so when Jesus says, when, when Jesus asked, who is my neighbor? Uh, if I'm supposed to love my neighbor as myself, who is my neighbor? That's the story that he tells. That's the example that he calls us to. And then once they get it, he says this, go and do likewise. So I'm just compelled to believe from the teachings of Jesus that, that a, a Christian ethic is that we're not to merely stop at, well, I'll love you as much as I love myself, but that we're, we're to go beyond that. Here's why I say that. I think there are times where maybe my agenda or my significance, my, the important things of, that I want, um, butt up against me loving someone else. And I would say, look, I'll love you to the point where I'm, where it, it goes beyond me loving myself. But, uh, but once I have to jeopardize me loving myself, then uh, all bets are off. Because Jesus only asked me to love you as much as I love myself. And I love myself a lot. But once I have to go beyond that, then I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to consider you um, in the equation anymore. Jesus calls us to be servants. And Jesus modeled that for us. Jesus calls us to humble ourselves before one another. Uh, Jesus calls us to take on one another's burdens. Jesus calls us at times to love others um, more than I even love myself. And I love myself a lot. But there are times where I have to, I have to give up that agenda uh, for the sake of someone else's agenda, really, at times. I know you've got to work that out in the real world. It gets complicated at times. But Jesus will help us if we just say, and, and with, with honest hearts, with pure hearts, I want to do this. I want to be a, I want to be a neighbor. I mean, I want to love my neighbor uh, like Jesus calls me to, like Jesus loves his neighbor. So I've been asking my, myself in this age of COVID-19, what, 
this, this, this question that we've been asking for a while. What would Jesus do? I would encourage you to do that as, we, as you wrestle with hard decisions of where to go and where not to go and what to do and what not to do and how to help people and how to not help. Like in this situation right now, Jesus, the God man who didn't consider equality with God something to be grasped, but he humbled himself and became a servant even to the point of death out of obedience to the Father. In this situation, in the year 2020 and COVID-19 season, what would Jesus do at this moment in time? Just ask that. And if you're honest with yourself, I think you'll, you'll, land, you'll land in a good place. Love you guys. Rest well tonight.